is the anatomy and it includes the trunk surface and ab anatomy abdomen pelvis gastrointestinal tract accessory gastrointestinal and other organs and uh, urinary system male genital tract female genital tract vasculatory arteries vasculatory veins lymphatic system neuroanatomy endocrine anatomy, anatomy and fetal skull this is very important for the part one and uh, let's begin with the Let's begin with the trunk surface anatomy and uh, let's begin with the trunk surface anatomy. Number one is vertebral level and T2 is at the suprasternal notch, T5 is the angle of Lewis, T9 is zephoid and L1 contains transpyloric plane of Addison's which is halfway between suprasternal notch and pubis, one hand width below the xiphoid process. And it crosses the pancreatic neck, the duodenal fracture, the fundus of crawl bladder, tip of ninth postal cartilage and renal hilum. And uh, the termination of the spinal cord. L3 it has the subcostal plane it line that joins the inferior margin of 10th rib L4 the iliac crest plane and bifurcation of aorta S2 it is at the posterior superior iliac spines and uh, the important landmark is the termination of dural sheath then the position of umbilical is variable but it is usually at the vertebral level L3 to L5. The coastal margin is the medial margin deformed by the false ribs, the 7 to 10. The linea semilunaris is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis. The McBurney's point is two thirds of the way laterally along the line from the umbilical cord to the anterior superior iliac spine on the right side. Palmer point is two third of the way laterally along the line from the umbilicus to the point of the intersection between the mid clavicular line and the costal margin of the ninth rib. Arcuate line of the Douglas is it is where the inferior epigastric vessels they enter the rectus sheath, the point of termination of posterior rectus sheath, and halfway between the umbilicus and the pubis the linea alba it is the fusion of abdominal muscles aponeurosis and it stretches from the xiphoid to the uh, pubic symphysis organs palpable in the normal adults liver the lower border of the lips right kidney the lower pole and cecum sigmoid and aorta parasynthesis is done at midline the linea alba and lateral to the backburnis point to avoid the inferior epigastric vessels. Next is the abdomen and uh, abdominal fascia. The trunk they has only superficial fascia composed of the fatty layer of camper and deep fibrous layer of scarpa. Scarpa's fascia it blends in with the deep fascia of upper thigh in the perineum it continues as the coli's fascia abdominal wall muscles they include the anterior abdominal wall it has the rectus abdominis the lateral wall muscles has the external oblique and internal oblique and transversus abdominis the posterior wall contains diaphragm quadrates lumborum the swass major and iliacus the rectus sheath Aponeurosis, it is made up of the anterior leaf and posterior leaf. leaf. Posterior leaf is present only from below the costal margin to the arcuate line and it is composed of. Let's find out the detail of the abdominal wall muscles. Anterior. First is the anterior abdominal wall. It contains rectus abdominis, external oblique, internal oblique, and transversus abdominis. 
first is the rectus abdominis the origin is from the fifth to seventh costal cartilage it inserted on the pubic crest and innervations uh, tendinous innervations the three between xiphoid and umbilicus and one below umbilicus and only on the anterior rectus and superior epigastric vessels they pierce the rectus in at this site second is the external oblique muscle it they originates from the outer surface of the lower eighth rib and it is inserted on the xiphoid the linea alba pubis crest pubic tubercle anterior half of the iliac crest and it is innervated by anterior primary rami of the t7 to t12 the third is the internal oblique and it has the line uh, it is originated from the lumbar fascia anterior two-third of the iliac crest and lateral two-third of the inguinal ligament it is inserted on the lower six costal cartilage the linear alba and pubic crest innervated by the t7 to t12 the fourth muscle is the transversus abdominis it originates from the lower six costal cartilages the lumbar fascia anterior two-third of the iliac crest and the lateral one-third of the inguinal ligament and um, it is inserted on the libia line linea alba and pubic crest and uh, innervated by the anterior primary rema of the t7 to t12 now the posterior abdominal wall it contains swas major the swas minor and iliacus swas major originates from the transverse process of the lumbar vertebrae it is inserted on the lesser tender of the femur and is it is innervated by anterior primary rami of the l1 and l2 swas minor it is originated from the bodies of the t12 and l1 and it is inserted on the iliopectomial eminences and it lies on the swas major and it is absent in the 40 percent of the patients or the people the third is the iliacus it is uh, originated from the upper two third of the inner aspects of the iliac crest and it is inserted on the lateral sides of the swas major tendon and it is innervated by the femoral nerve and it acts as the hip flap now the rectus sheath composition and it is composed of the anterior leaf and the posterior leaf anterior leaf it is uh, above the costal margins and uh, it involves the external oblique and costal margins to arcuate the line of the douglas the external oblique and internal oblique and below the arcuate line of the douglas it is the external oblique internal oblique and the transversus abdominis and the posterior leaf it has no uh, margin above the costal margins and uh, uh, the costal uh, margins uh, to uh, uh, arcuate line of the Douglas are the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis and uh, below the arcuate line of the Douglas it has no leaf. Now moving towards the ligaments, canals and fossas and uh, first is the inguinal ligament, the most important ligament of the body. It is also known as the ligament of the upper part and it runs from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and epineurosis they forms by the external oblique the second is the inguinal canal it is 3.8 centimeter long and it it lies parallel and above the inguinal ligament and it runs from the internal to external ring the internal ring it lies on the transversalis fascia it is the midpoint of the inguinal ligament and it medially demarcated by the inferior epigastric vessels and 1.2 cm above the femoral artery. The external ring it is V-shaped and it defect is external oblique epineurosis and it lies above the medial to the pubic tubercle. Now the canal relation. This is the inguinal canal. 
above it it has the internal oblique and the transverse abdominalis abdominalis and below it is the inguinal ligament on the medial side there is the anterior skin fascia external oblique epineurosis and the internal oblique muscles and to the la uh, lateral it is there the posterior sorry it is the anterior anteriorly there is the skin the fascia external oblique uh, and epinosis and internal oblique and on the posterior side there is a conjoint tendon and the transversalis fascia now what is the conjoint ten tendon it is the fusion of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis and it is in it inserts into the pectineal line and the pubic crust and uh, now the spermatic cord it is uh, comprised of the three facial layers the external spermatic which is formed by the external oblique epineurosis the cremasteric it forms by the internal oblique and the internal uh, spermatic which is formed by the transversalis fascia there are the three arteries which are very important number one is the testicular artery the vas which is a branch of the inferior vesicle and the cremasteric which is a branch of the inferior epigastric there are the three nerves which are the ilioinguinal on the top of the cord cremasteric which is a branch of the genitofemoral nerve and the sympathetic three other structures which are included by the somatic cord they are the vas reference the pampiniform plexus of the veins and the lymphatics now another important it is the femoral triangle the contents of the femoral triangle it includes the femoral nerve the artery and vein and also the deep inguinal nodes and boundaries on the these are the boundaries of the femoral triangle on the top there is a superficial fascia which uh, 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 the great saphenous veins and the lymphatic vessels and the fascia lata on the floor is made up of the ilia iliacus swas ten tendon and the pectinis and adductor lodge on the medial side there is the adductor longus and on the lateral side there is the sartorius and on the superior along with the roof there is the inguinal ligament now what is femoral sheath it is derived from the ex extra peritoneal intra abdominal fascia anterior transversalis fascia and posterior iliacus fascia and it contains a femoral canal femoral artery and femoral vein and it does not co contains the femoral nerve this is again the femoral sheath the femoral sheath is made up of the a vac which is artery vein and canal nerve is outside the femoral sheath now what is the femoral ring it is the entrance to the femoral canal and um, this is the femoral ring and it is oval and a large in females diameter is 1.25 centimeter contains the fat and lymphatic nodes and the boundaries includes this ring boundary includes anteriorly there are the inguinal ligament posteriorly there is a pectineus pectineal fascia and the Ashley and the Cooper's ligament on the medial side there is a lacunar ligament on the lateral side there is a femoral vein this is the lateral end the medially there is a lacunar ligament and uh, anteriorly there is the inguinal ligament and posteriorly there is the pectineus pectineal uh, fascia and uh, Cooper's ligament so what are the lacunar ligament it is also known as the Gambernet's ligament and it is a part of the epineurosis of the external oblique that is reflected backward and the lateral words and is attached to the pectineal line of the pubis. It is larger in the males and the posterior margin is attached to the pectineal uh, ligaments and the anterior margin is attached to the inguinal ligaments. The adductor canal, it is also known as the subsartorial and uh, uh, hunter's canal and epineurotic tunnel in the mid of the third of the thigh and it extends from the apex of the femoral triangle to the adductor hiatus and the boundaries anterior and the lateral there is the 
uh, vastus medialis and the posteriorly the adductor longus and magnus and the lines on the aponeurosis in is uh, sartorius muscles and the canal they contains the femoral vessels and the saphenous nerve and the hazel back triangle it is a space which is bounded uh, laterally by the inferior epigastric artery medially the rectus abdominis and uh, uh, inferiorly the inguinal ligament also known as the inguinal triangle and site of the direct inguinal hernia the next important cavity is the peritoneal cavity the peritoneal cavity it is formed by the primitive silomic cavity of the embryo and it is a serous line and closed in the male and consists of the greater sacs and lesser sacs this is the cross sections of the uh, peritoneal cavity and it shows the relations of the the lesser and the greater sacs we'll discuss it later so let's first move to the lesser sac lesser sac it is the cavity which is formed by the lesser and the greater momentum and uh, it is also known as omental bursa and it projects downwards between the layers of the greater momentum usually obliterated and the boundaries the left there, on the left side there is spleen on the right side it is the axi like foramen on the superior there is liver and anterior it is the stomach and posterior it is the pancreas so what is the apoploic foramen it is also known as the foramen of the Winslow and it is uh, the entrance to the lesser sac and the boundaries includes um, includes this is the apoploic foramen on the superior side there is a caudate lobe of the liver on the inferior side the, there is a first part of the duodenum the hepatic artery on the anterior the free borders of the lesser momentum and the posterior inferior vena cava so now move towards the lesser momentum it is also known as the gastrohepatic momentum and it is the double layers of the peritoneum extended from the liver to the lesser curvature of the stomach and it is divided into four ligaments hepatogastric the hepatoduodenal the hepatophrenic uh, and hepatoesophageal the free borders of the lesser momentum they contains the portal veins the common bile ducts and the hepatic artery and it is enclosed in the Gilson's capsule now uh, what is the greater momentum it is also known as the gastrocolic momentum and it is the large fold of the peritoneum that extends from the stomach to the posterior abdominal wall after encasing the transverse colon and uh, it is continuous with the duodenum on the right side the gastro uh, uh, Lineal ligament on the left and the blood supply is are the right and left gastroepiploic vessels it is divided into four ligaments the gastrocolic the gastrosplenic gastrophrenic and splenorenal ligaments now what are the ligaments which are within the peritoneal cavity it includes the umbilical ligaments and the median median which is also known as the uricus and the embryological remnants of the allantois the medial and embryological rem uh, remnant of the umbilical artery and the lateral it these uh, overlies the inferior epigastric artery now uh, the falciparum ligament which runs from the umbilicus to the liver and the ligamentum teres which are the remnants of the umbilical vein and passes between the quarters and the left liver lobe and attaches to the free borders of the falciform ligament now the intraperitoneal fossa there are the four intra peritoneal fossa the lesser sac the intersect point the paraduodenal between the duodenal junctions and the inferior mesenteric vessels and the rectocecal and uh, subphrenic spaces uh, there are the five subphrenic spaces the subphrenic right and left divided by the falci form ligament and the right sub uh, uh, hepatic which is uh, morrison's uh, space and the uh, left subhepatic which is the lesser sac and the right extra peritoneal it is between the bearing of the liver and the diaphragm so this is the free border of the lesser momentum and posteriorly there is a portal vein on the left side there is hepatic artery and on the right side there is a common bile duct now let's move towards the pelvis and uh, let's start with the bones and ligaments 
first it are the pawns and the gamas pelvis is made up of the uh, in nominate bones the sacrum and the coccus and in nominate bones they consist of the three bones the ileum ischium and pubis and the iliopectineal eminences it is the point of the fusion between the pubis and the ileum and the lateral to it are the two muscles which are passes uh, which pass in the groove they are the iliacus and the swass major then there is obturator foramen it is uh, bounded by the pubic and the ischium and the acetabulum is the fusion point of all the three innominate bones the sacrum it is made up of the five fused vertebrae and it is uh, triangular in shape and uh, there is a sacral promontory promontory represents the anterior border of the upper part of the sacrum it consists entirely a central mass two into row of the four anterior sacral foramina two into lateral masses and two ally superior aspects of the lateral mass and consists posteriorly of uh, the sacral canal two row of the four posterior sacral um, uh, sacral foramina and the sacral hiatus and uh, it transmits the five sacral nerve and the sacral uh, cornua and the superior articular facet the dural sheath terminates at s tubion which the sacral uh, canal they contains the fatty tissue and the extra dural space and the caudal equina and the phylum terminal the coccus it is made up of the three to five fused bones and uh, now moves towards the pelvic joints the symphysis pubis is not a synovial joint and the sacroiliac joint is a synovial joint pelvic brim it is bounded by the bacterial line the arcuate line and sacral promontory and the upper margins of the symphysis pubis the linear terminalis it consists of the arcuate line the pectineal line and the pubic crust the pelvic outlet it is bounded by the pubic arch ischio pubic rami and two sciatic nodes and the coccus and the diamond in the shape dimple just above the buttocks they defines uh, as two and sacroiliac joint and terminations of the dural sheath and the posterior superior iliac spines the sacrospinous ligaments they run from the ischial spine to the sacrum and the coccus the sacrotuberous ligament they runs from the sacrum or the eu ischial tuberosity and the boundaries of the greater sciatic foramen it includes superiorly the sacroiliac ligament inferiorly sacrospinous ligament and posterior medial the sacrotuberous ligament and the anterior lateral the great sciatic notch now the boundaries of the lesser sciatic foramen it includes anteriorly the ischial tuberosity laterally the lesser sciatic notch the posteriorly the sacrotuberous ligament and superior superior sacrospinous ligament now female versus male pelvis the female versus male pelvis acetabulum is large in the fem in males and whereas the small in females the obturator foramen is round in males and oval in females ischial tuberosity is interned in males and uh, everted in females pelvic inlet is a heart shape in male and oval in female and pelvic canal long in males and short in females pelvic outlet small in males and large in females and the inferior pubic rami angle is acute in male and wide in female and ischial tuberosity angle it admits two knuckles in female and sacrum it is long and narrow in males and short and wide in female now pelvic measurements they include the plane of the inlet is 60 degree to the horizontal the diagonal conjugate is 12.7 centimeter what is diagonal conjugate it is a promontory of the sacrum to the lower border of the pubic symphysis and anterior posterior outlet is from the midpoint of the pubic symphysis to the apex of the coccus and transverse outlet is the distance between the ischial tuberosities oblique outlet is from the mid point to the sacrotuberous ligament to join junctions of the opposite ischial and pubic rami these are the pelvic measurements in the centimeter the inlet is 12.7 centimeter uh, and oblique 11.5 centimeter and anterior posterior is 10 centimeter mid is 11.5 centimeter transverse 11.7 centimeter uh, oblique and 11.5 centimeter um, anterior posterior 
and outlet is 10 cm transverse 11.5 cm oblique and 12.7 cm pubic to sacrococcygeal joint now the pelvic muscles the pelvic muscles they include number one is the piriformis which originates from the anterior part of the sacrum the greater sciatic foramen and anterior surface of the sacrofibrous ligament and it is inserted on the greater trunk and of the femur and it exists pelvis by the greater sciatic foramen and is uh, pierced by the common peroneal nerve the obturator internus it, they are originated from the medial surface of the obturator membrane is came in the pubis and it is inserted on the greater trunk center of the femur and um, it exists the pelvis by the lesser sciatic foramen the obturator externus the obturator membrane obturator foramen and inserted on the greater trunk center of the femur now let's start the fascias the pelvic fascia it is the term applied by the connective tissue of the uh, covering of the pelvis and it includes the facial covering of the levator ni and the obturator internus and uh, endopelvic fascia it is the extra peritoneal tissue of the uterus vagina bladder and rectum and it gives rise to three sets of the ligaments which are the cardinal ligament the uterocephal ligament and the pubocervical ligament the, uh, these three ligaments they support the cervix and the vaginal vault and they are lengthened in the pelvic floor prolapse the cardinal ligament it is also known as the transverse ligament and the mechanrods ligament and it passes laterally from the cervix and upper vagina it attaches the pelvic side walls along the line of the insertions of the levator ni and it is pierced by the uterus and uh, Next is the uterosacral ligament. It originates from the posterior uh, lateral aspects of the cervix and uh, it is at the level of the isthmus. It is attached to the periosteum of the sacroiliac joints and the lateral part of the S3 and enrich the pouch of the Douglas. The round ligament, they together with the ovarian ligament, it is equivalent to the male gubernaculum and the blood supply is by the uterine artery. Next is the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor it is made up of the two compartment, the pelvic diaphragm, which contains the levator and the coccygeus muscles, and the superficial muscles of the perineum, they forming the anterior, the urogenital triangle, and the posterior, the anal triangle. So, how uh, the details of the pelvic diaphragm the muscles they are the levator ni and the coccygeus and the uh, levator ni it uh, originates from the posterior aspects of the pubic bone and the uh, fascia of the side walls of the pelvis and covering the obturator internus and the ischial spine insertion is on the perineal body the anal spinsters cortex and the median fibrous raphi and they are uh, forms the levator prostate the spinster vaginae the puborectalis and the pubococcygeus and the iliococcygeus second is the coccygeus muscle which originates from the sacrospinous ligament and the ischial spine and it inserts on the coccyx now the triangles anterior urogenital triangle it is bounded by the line across the ischial tuberosities and the ischial pubic inferior rami and uh, the perineal membrane perineal membrane it is attached to the urogenital triangle it is pierced by the urethra and vagina and it forms the two spaces the deep perineal pouch and the superficial perineal pouch the deep perineal pouch it is bounded by the perineal membrane and the levator and i fish it contains external urethral uh, sphincter and the deep transverse perineal muscles and the bulbo urethral glands are coopers the superficial perineal pouch the boundaries they include the superiorly the uh, perineal membrane and inferiorly the perineal fascia and it contains the superficial perineal muscles the bulbospongiosis the ischiocavernous cavernosus and the bartholin glands the greater vestibular glands and the crore of the clitoris and uh, the perineal body it is a fibrous muscular node and it lies in the midline at the junctions of the anterior and the posterior peri perineum and it is uh, the point of the attachment for the external inner spinster the bulbospongiosis the transverse perineal muscles and the levator ni 
the posterior anal triangle it is the space between the ischial uh, tuberosities and the corpus and it contains the uh, ischiorectal fossa the levator ani and the anus it is the ischiorectal fossa it contains the lobulated fat anus and the external anus menstrual and the alcox canals canal and the fossa on the either side communicates with each other behind the anus and the boundaries um, these are the boundaries and uh, uh, here it is the ischio rectal fossa on the medial side there is external anal spinsters and levator and fascia the floor is formed by the subcutaneous fat and the skin the posterior part contains the sacrotuberosis ligament and uh, gluteus maximus and the anteriorly uh, there is a urogenital uh, perineum on the lateral side there is obturator fossa and on the superior uh, there is levator and I. So now the external anal sphincter is attached to the perineal body and the uh, coccus and the puborectalis. Now let's start the next topic. It is the gastrointestinal tract and uh, the gastrointestinal tract. The stomach first is the stomach and uh, stomach is J shaped consists of the fundus body and the pyloric antrum and uh, the body secretes the pepsin and the hydrochloride ox oxy cells and the pyloric antrum it secretes the alkaline juices and the gastrin the in serosa angularis it marks the junctions between the body and the pyloric antrum and the veins of the myo marks on the junctions between the pylorus and the duodenum the sphincters they are the cardia and the pylorus and uh, here the borders of the stomach and uh, um, this is the stomach and uh, anteriorly there is the left costal margin and the diaphragm and the left lobe of the liver on the posterior side there is a lesser sac the pancreas the transverse uh, mesocolon spleens and the splen uh, splenic splenic nerve arteries and left kidney and left suprarenal gland on the superior there is a left dome of the diaphragm now the blood supply is by the branches of the um, celiac axis and it is the left gastric artery the splenic artery and the hepatic artery this is the celiac axis and it gives rise to the left gastric artery and the splenic artery and the hepatic artery the splenic artery is going to uh, give off the short gastric artery the left gastroepiploic artery and uh, uh, also the hepatic artery it is going to give rise to the right gastric artery the cystic artery and the gastroduodenal artery which is further going to divide into right gastroepiploic artery and the superior pancreatoduodenal artery so now moving towards the lymphatics of the stomach the area one it is the superior two-third of the stomach drains directly to the aortic nodes area two the right two-third of the inferior and one-third of the stomach they drains by the uh, subpyloric nodes of the aortic nodes and the area three the left one-third of the inferior one-third of the stomach they drains by the subpancreatic node to the aortic nodes now the nerve supply is the vagus nerve and the posterior nerve of the um, uh, let the uh, letter jet now moving towards the duodenum, it is a c-shaped organ and uh, it contains the uh, Brunner's glands and it is 25.5 centimeter long and is covered by the peritoneum from two for 2.5 centimeter and then becomes a retroperitoneum it, it is divided into four parts the first part it contains it is five centimeter long and uh, the first part of the genera anteriorly there is liver called bladder and posteriorly there is inferior vena cava portal vein the common bile duct gastroduodenal artery the second part it is 7.5 centimeter long and it covers around the head of the pancreas it contains some major duodenal papillae also known as the ampulla of the waiter and which is the opening of the major pancreatic juices also known as the duct of the vesicle and the common bile duct and the minor duodenal papillae which is the opening and of the accessory pancreatic ducts also known as the duct of the centaurinae the spinster of the order is also present here and the relations of the second part in, includes uh, this is the second part anteriorly there is transverse colon and posteriorly there is right kidney uh, 
and the shoe detail. So the third part, it is 10 cm long and it runs transversely towards the left and the relations includes that um, anteriorly there is superior mesenteric vessels and the mesenteric root and posterior there is inferior vinyl cava aorta and uh, now move towards the due to gestational junction it is how it is identified and uh, it is identified by the presence of the ligamentum of tresis a peritoneal fold from the right cross of the diaphragm containing the some smooth and the skeletal muscle fibers and uh, inferior mesenteric vessels the distance from behind the pancreatic immediately to the left of the junction so what is the blood supply the blood supply is the superior superior pancreatic duodenal artery and inferior pancreatic duodenal artery the branch of the um, uh, superior mesenteric artery now let's move towards the uh, small intestine the small intestines It measures 3 to 10 meter long and the small intestine mesentery it is 15 centimeter long and starts at the duodenal junctions and ends at the right sacroiliac joints. They have the valvuli cony ventis and the jejunum they versus the ileum jejunum they has a thick wall and jejunum has a large diameter jejunum lies in the umbilical region and ileum has a thinner thicker and more fat laden mesentery and mesentery vessels they form the one to two arches at, at the jejunum where at the, at the ileum they form the three to five arcades the large intestine it is comprises of the seven portion And um, the cecum, it is uh, along with the appendix, ascending colon 20 cm long, transverse colon is 45.5 cm long, descending colon is 25.4 cm long, sigmoid is 12.7 to 76 cm long, and the rectum, rectum is 12.7 cm long, and inner canal is 3.8 cm long. Has appendix epiploci fat filled peritoneal tags except for the appendix cecum and rectum has tinea coli three platinum bound running from the base of the appendix to the retrosigmoid junctions there except for the appendix and the rectum has circulations and uh, peri peritoneum coverings and the mucosa they has the um, goblet cells and the novulae and the nerve plexus are the mesons in the submucosa layer and the orbex between the muscles muscle layer now the peritoneal covering of the large intestine the peritonized area is the transverse colon and sigmoid non peritonized area includes ascending colon and descending colon and the inconsistent is the cecum and the appendix now moving to uh, move towards the rectum the rectum it has no peritoneal covering in its upper one third posteriorly middle one third posterior laterally and entire lower one third commences at s3 and s ends at the level of the lower one fourth of the vagina in women and apex of the prostate in men it has the three uh, lateral inflections left right and left and the valves of the Houston is also present here in the rectum now the donor villar fascia it separates the rectum from the interior structures and uh, uh, this is the rectum anteriorly there is the pouch of the douglas the uterus bladder prostrate seminal vesicles and the vagina on the lateral side there is levator and eye on the both sides and posteriorly there is the sacrum coccus middle sacral artery the lower sacral nerves and uh, in the canal Anal canal has the epithelium which lower half is the squamous and upper half is the columnar and this junction is separated by the valves of the ball. The blood supply the upper one third it has the uh, superior rectal vessels lower one third one uh, half is the inferior rectal vessels. The lymphatics upper one uh, half is the uh, lumbar nose and lower half is the inguinal nose the relations anterior there is perineal body the posterior there is cortex and the lateral there are the ischiorectal fossa the hemorrhoids they are the dilatations of the superior rectal veins it is um, 
density. Now appendix, appendix is also known as the vermiform appendix. It connects to the cecum and the base is 2.5 cm below the ileocecal valve and it lies the posterior medial to the cecum. The length is 2.5 to 23 cm. The blood supply is the iliocolic artery and it has two folds of the peritoneal attachment which has the iliocecal fold and the appendix mesentery and the iliocecal uh, fold it passes from the front of the ilium to the appendix and it is also known as the bloodless fold of the T ribs. Appendix mesentery it descends from behind the ilium to the appendix and contains the iliocolic artery. Now the portal vein system. It drains blood from the alimentary tract and excluding the anus to the liver and uh, Formation is the inferior mesenteric veins that joins the splenic veins above uh, L3 and superior mesenteric vein that joins the splenic vein behind the neck of the pancreas L1 giving rise to the portal vein and the portal vein they divides into left and right branches. The collateral pathway between the portal and the systemic venous system it includes the esophageal branches of the left gastric vein and the esophageal vein of the esophageal system and the superior rectal and the inferior rectal veins and the portal branches of the liver and the veins of the diaph diaphragm which has the bare area and the veins of the abdominal wall by the falciform ligament. Now, the portal tributaries is in the mesocolon, the mesentery, and the retroperitoneal veins to the renal veins, lumbar veins, and the phrenic veins. Now, what is the macular diverticulum? It is the remnant of the patello intestinal duct and its communication between the midcut and the jock side, and it always on the antimesenteric border. And there is the rule of the two. I have to follow to diagnose the rule of the two, which includes if the prevalence is 2% and the male to female ratio is 2.2 ratio 1 and it is 2 inches or 5 centimeters long and it is situated second feet, uh, 2 feet or 61 centimeters from the ileocecal junction. Now, let's move towards the accessory gastrointestinal uh, and other organs and uh, starting with the liver. And the liver is the largest organ in the body and it has the four lobes, the right, left, anterior quadrant and the posterior quadrant and it contains the falciform ligament, the ligamentum teres, the remnants of the left umbilical vein and the ligamentum venosum which are the remnants of the ductus venosus. The lesser momentum they arises from the porta hepatis and the ligamentum venosum and the porta hepatis is a 5 cm long and contains the uh, anteriorly the blue uh, sorry the bile duct and posteriorly the portal vein and anterior left is the hepatic artery and the venous drainage are three to uh, number they are the left right and central the blood supply is the left hepatic artery the right hepatic artery and the cystic artery and uh, biliary system it consists of the common hepatic duct and uh, the common hepatic duct is the is formed from the fusions of the right and left hepatic ducts 3.8 cm long and the cystic duct 3.8 cm long and the common bile duct the form from the functions of the common hepatic duct and the cystic duct it is 10 cm long gall pellet holds 50 ml of the bile and separates the right and quadrant lobes of the liver and the epithelium is columnar now moving towards the pancreas the weight of the pancreas is 80 gram Eighty gram, and it contains the ions of the Langerhan, which secretes the glucagon from alpha cells, insulin from beta cells, and the somatostatin from the gamma cells, and the pancreatic polypeptide from the F cells. It is retroperitoneal, and it is uh, is both an endocrine and exocrine glands. The relations it includes the pancreas, uh, anterior. Posteriorly, it has inferior vena cava, the portal vein, the inferior and the superior mesenteric and the splenic veins, aorta and uh, superior mesenteric and the ciliac artery. Anterior, there is stomach and lesser sac and posterior, the left kidney 
suprarenal gland and the diaphragm blood supply includes the splenic artery and the pancreatoduodenal artery and the development it includes the ventral bud which is, it is the small and forms the part of the head and the uh, uh, uncinate uh, un, un, uncinate process and it is drained by the duct of the Birsang's also known as the major pancreatic duct. The dorsal bud it is the large and the forms the body tail and the part of the head and the uh, uncinate process and it contains the accessory duct of the centaurini also known as the accessory pancreatic duct and which is non functional. Now let's move towards the spleen. Spleen it is a cupped hand. The size of the spleen is cupped hand and ligaments are the gastro spleen splenic which runs through the greater curvature of the uh, stomach and carries the short gastro can the left gastro epiploic artery and uh, leno renal which runs through the posterior abdominal wall contains the splenic artery and the tail of the pancreas and the accessory spleen tissue they can occurs in the ovaries chest is momentum small bowel mesentery and tail of the pancreas now let's move towards the urinary system which is very important system for the part one examinations and uh, first here are the kidneys which are the heteroperitoneal the right kidney is 1.2 centimeter lower than the left and the relations they includes anteriorly there is a liver second part of the duodenum ascending colon stomach and descending colon and posterior there is a diaphragm caudatus lumborum swas transversus abdominus rib, rib nerves t2 intercostal ileo hypogastric and the ileoinguinal nerve and uh, then the vessels they order are the hilums are the front to the back and uh, they are the veins artery and and pelvis of the urethra it is supplied by the sympathetic nerve fibers it has three capsules the renal fascia the perinephric plate and the two capsules renal fascia it plants with the above to the diaphragm mainly with inferior vena cava and the aorta and laterally uh, there is a transverse salis fascia and anteriorly there is a track uh, tracks the ureter. The superior glands are not in the renal fascia. The second are the uh, next are the ureters. They are twenty five point four centimeter long and uh, they are valveless and the root is a pass anterior. The root is very important. It passes anterior to the medial edge of the swas major and separated from the tip of the transverse process L2 and L5 by the swas major.